Hi, this is Kim Edwards, and we're going to be doing some hard surface modeling. So this is the object, and we're going to do two versions, one higher poly and one lower poly. And I think the trick with modeling is trying to do things as simply as possible. In terms of breaking up the shape and choosing what to start from. So here I'm just turning interactive creation on, so I can just eyeball create a ten-sided cylinder in the right spot. And then I'm making a duplicate of that, Control D, and then on the duplicate I'll change the radius to be bigger. You can see I've got X-ray mode on in the viewport, so I can see through geometry through to the reference, and I've got in two objects now. Grab them both, do a boolean difference, and if I press 3 you'll see that it hasn't fused all the vertices together. So I'll just drag across it and go to Edit Mesh, Merge Components to join them back together. And press 3 for Smooth Mesh Preview just to check that's worked. Now I've got Symmetry on in my tool settings, just turn Symmetry on, just underneath your soft selection panel, and just using uh, snaps just to line everything up together. Uh, a good trick in Maya is uh, when you're doing snapping, so V is snap to point for example, you just want to snap something on a particular axis. Uh, you can just drag the corresponding axis, so the blue, the Z, or what have you, and only snap uh, and move your object on the axis. Now I'm going to open up the modeling toolkit. I'm just using the extrude there and drag them with my middle mouse left and right. And pressing D to toggle, editing the pivot point, making a duplicate, and rotating it around for our second piece. And here you can see I'm snapping, just dragging on the y axis to the other edge line the first shape that we created and making a duplicate of another part to use for the top sections. Then we're going to use the bridge tool to join that together. Deleting the history so things don't get too slow and buggy. And now we'll rotate around this third piece and snap it in place with Move tool and B. Now you can see here that symmetry is causing a problem, so I'm turning it off. And then just move our circle, which is the same size, into the right spot. And then adjust the, uh, the rest of the shape to match the reference. The reference isn't perfectly lined up on all axes, you probably notice that's still workable. So now it's going to be just lining up the uh, top, uh, the center of this with the uh, circular midpoint. And now just lining up all the edges now so that it can be joined together into one piece. I mean you could argue that Perhaps this doesn't need to be one piece. That's what we're going to do nonetheless. So, just snapping things in and use the insert edge loop tool, set it to multiple edge loops here, just to create some extra loops in there, and then snap them in line. So now to combine these two objects, once I've finished snapping these, we'll need to go to Mesh Combine and then Merge Components. But we can't merge com uh, components if there's bases in between them, so I'll have to uh, delete them. It's a handy little selection um, yeah, constraint in the Modeling Toolkit, which is Select by Angle. I'm using again here just to quickly select faces. So the 
the bottom to like the history manage components and uh, now we'll just mirror the object so we'll use mirror cut in this case and hold J to toggle this uh, discrete rotate and rotation delete the history and delete the cutting plane go into smooth mesh preview just to check everything looks hunky dory so to speak and now what I'm going to show you is with these open subdivision uh, surfaces uh, we can use a crease tool to stop things being relaxed when they're being subdivided and smooth so as you can see there that's what's happening the crease tool you use the middle mouse uh, you press it down and drag it left and right to uh, increase the crease value and so now I'm just going to go around to all the kind of sort of border edges that I want to keep in place um, and setting their crease value to 10 so the reason you know a lot of modeling you do in this kind of subdivision workflow just so you can um, minimize the amount of polys that you have to push around um, and what we're doing here. So just a bit of selecting going on here, I'll crease them, check it with a smooth mesh preview and then manually apply a smooth just of one subdivision over in mesh smooth. So that's a preview of what it's going to look like. The normals are a bit funny, we'll fix that afterwards. Just having a double check, going, turning the preview off, and now actually going to manually apply the smooth, smooth one subdivision, open subdivision, Captain or Quark. Then we'll go to normal, set normal angle to the default of 30, and it's pretty much done. So now I'm just going to do a bit of cleanup, just remove some edges that we don't need, just to uh, keep it lowish poly and then we've got lots of circular shapes which need more edges to um, define them so they're not so blocky and you can see I've ended up with a real cluster of um, uh, faces in that sort of central area which might have been able to be avoided uh, if these weren't one fused piece but still have to have quite a bit given all of these Heavy shapes in there, so just going in, pressing Control Delete to delete the edges and the vertices in this kind of cleanup phase, and just duplicated it. And we're now going to make a higher poly version, just because it's a little bit blocky still. Um, when you look up close. So just smooth again, we've got the crease on and just going through and cleaning up and deleting some extraneous edges. Now the last thing to note is you probably want to have some sort of bevel on this just so you get more highlights when you're um, rendering. Um, beveling adds quite a lot of polys and is a bit messy so I'd make another duplicate before I did that. And also most renderers will have a uh, a solution to bevel edges just in rendering. So in Mentor you can find a round corners texture that you can use.